Here's my impressions and a little house overview of the brand Austin's. I first heard of this brand, as I think many of us did, uh, from Persolase's interview with brand co-founder Chris Yu. At the time, they were very kindly offering that people who watched the live and replied would get a free sample. And though they're based in the UK and they said it was UK only, but if you message them anyway, when they get a chance, they'll try to send it your way once they have distribution in other countries. Um, so I went ahead and messaged them. And much to my surprise, a few months later, I had nearly forgotten it, came a little package with rose oil esparta with a lovely handwritten note. Um, I think that kind of personalization and also really belief in the product to send free samples out, I'm sure it costs money, it's expensive. Uh, not every small perfume brand can do this, um, but it really shows a confidence in the product that you're going to like it enough that you'll wanna buy it if you get to try it. Um, so I really love that, I really appreciate that. Um, only since then have more brands embraced discovery sets uh, probably because of the pandemic and because of the explosion of interest in perfume. Um, but I think it's really great the way, um, you know, they were confident in the product, wanting to get it out there, wanting people to try it. Uh, always a sucker for a freebie. I think another interview, was it Alice Dupark? I don't remember, uh, offered another free sample. Or maybe it was when they opened in the US. Yeah, I think they said, send them a DM if you're in the US, you're interested, they'll send you something once they get distribution. And I asked for cashmere and velvet. Now, unfortunately, uh, these are actually two of my least favorite. They're both very nice. The reason I requested rose oil is that in that Persolase interview, uh, Chris talked about part of the spark behind starting the brand was experiencing this raw material of rose oil that just blew his mind and um, really changed the way he thought about rose. And he had a conversation with Dominique Ropian and mentioned this material. And Dominique said, you know, he couldn't use it because it was too expensive for a lot of brands' budgets. You know, this is the kind of cat catnip uh, thing for perfumistas. We hear expensive, rare, over budget, raw materials, and we just want to smell it. And no doubt it's a fantastic rose, but not quite for me. And cashmere and velvet, again, sounded interesting to me, but not quite for me. But I still thought they were good enough that I kept the brand in the back of my mind. And more recently, I've been on the search for sort of a fresh jasmine having kind of fallen for Amouage's Ashore before committing to a bottle, I wanted to see what else is out there. And I came across several recommendations for the Austin's Jasmine. So I thought, okay, it's time to just order the whole sample set and try them out. Um, so I'll start with actually what I think are the three kind of outliers, but they really make a team. They really make a trio of the three woody fragrances. Um, I think possibly the problem with these is that they're pretty subtle and these three, while not exactly like each other, I feel like they're similar. Like they are they really make a nice little trio of woody fragrances, but the way they wear and the way they smell is actually really fantastic. So I'll start with Patchouli Heart number one. I think overall the brand aesthetic is very refined. It's not simple, but it's also not overly complicated fragrances, there's just enough going on to be interesting, but it feels like everything is legible. It's not muddy. It's not overly relying on familiar design aroma chemicals, um, but it's also not, I wouldn't call it minimal or airy either. So patchouli number one, um, it's really marked by the aromatic beginning, pink pepper, incense, licorice, rosemary, lavender, um, I've got it here sprayed on strip. I've worn all of these. I've worn this multiple times. And I remember wearing this on quite a humid, rainy, cooler day, like an early fall feeling day. And now we're back to high temps again. And I love the intro. It's almost uh, a foil as you think it's going to be a fresh fragrance because the intro is quite fresh and aromatic with that pink pepper up top. And then very quickly the mid which is where I'm at here, becomes very herbaceous. And for a moment, I actually didn't like that as I don't always like overly herbal fragrances. Like I can't get over the oregano and interlude. I can't stand it. 
Um, spices are okay, but I don't like it when it leans too fruity. For a moment in the mid, it goes that direction, but the base is absolutely lovely. And to me, the base is all about the labdanum. Um, it lists patchouli heart and cis labdanum absolute as the base and amber. Um, by the time I got to the base, it was just this warm, beautiful, smooth, a little bit smoky, resinous labdanum base. Um, my reference for labdanum is, well, besides the Leon, which is a lot warmer, more, more vanillic take, also just a lot bigger in general, um, would be the Eldo Atake Le Soleil, which is kind of all straight, just a big slug of labdanum. Um, and I recognize that smell in the base of this perfume, but it's very elegant. Um, but this one also feels kind of raw and close to the earth. Now I don't get anything that reminds me of patchouli, but again, I believe patchouli heart is sort of fractionated. It takes out some of the nasty bits, some of the scratchy bits, um, and not being familiar with the raw material in isolation. I don't get anything that speaks to me as patchouli in either of these, but there's a general earthiness. I think they've done a fantastic job with the colors here. I really love that, the color coordination. So it was almost like a movie that starts great and sags in the middle and you think, oh, I don't like this. But that by the end, it has you cheering, <laughs> thinking what a great movie. And so I was cheering by the end of this and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I think all three of these woody fragrances are pretty subtle and really need to be worn on skin and experienced, which can sometimes be difficult for a brand um, to get that amount of time and attention from a customer. But I think it's really worth it here and well, well rewarded. So next, patchouli heart number two. It's definitely the more modern take on patchouli. It lists outright Ambroxan in the base, also Cyst Absolute and Cashmere and other musks. This one wears bigger, more diffusive, I guess, because of those aroma chemicals. But again, it doesn't smell generic, it doesn't smell cheap by any means. It smells quite cozy. I definitely get there's black pepper in the intro, black pepper and cypress. Yeah, it smells like you're in sort of a damp forest and there's a fire burning off, but maybe you wore some kind of like slightly sweet, ambery perfume and it's mixing with that. It also this violet leaf and iris. I definitely get an irisy sort of rooty leatheriness in the intro. This one also wears really nicely. Um, and it reminds me of something. The base kept reminding me of something. And it's actually uh, Celine fragrances, especially it's a black tie or night clubbing. That mix of iris and broxen um, and woodiness. Yeah, so it's really interesting. I think I slightly prefer patchouli heart number one. But this is also unlike anything I've smelled before. It's got the sweetness, which gives it a real roundness, I think. Um, and it wears and projects really nicely. I can imagine this would be really nice in the cold weather and I'll definitely be revisiting it then. And next up, Impression Cedarwood Heart. This one I was most excited to try and thought would be my favorite. Um, and it is very nice. Again, it's it advertises a slug of iris, cedar, galbanum, bergamot, cardamom, violet. Um, again, all three of these are in the same family, I feel. You, could, you can tell them apart, of course, in a lineup, easily distinguish them, but they're very much of a family. And I think that's kind of nice but also I feel like these three maybe are the ones that get slept on a little bit because of that as well. So yeah, the opening is amazing. And this reminds me a lot, a lot of Celine nightclubbing. And it actually has me wondering if Chris had any involvement in developing the Celine fragrances. And that's by no means a knock. The Celine fragrances are very well done. Doesn't smell like a dupe, but it smells like it was made by the same mind. Um, it must be that, that combination of galbanum, iris, and broxen cedar. Uh, it doesn't have the smoky, the ashy, the cigarette accord of night clubbing, not at all. 
Um, and it's not as powdery in the dry down as night clubbing. And I prefer this, but it's very much that Eddie Sliman Dior slash Celine aesthetic. Um, this one wears very soft, but again, it's a subtle, it's a subtle creeper. Um, I reapplied this, which is rare for me because I usually am pretty sensitive, um, but I just wanted more. But it does give that nice wafting, warm glow throughout the day, but it's very much becomes part of your skin, part of your smell. It doesn't stand out. Yeah, it doesn't project a lot, but it's very intimate, very sexy. It feels very dressed up to me. I imagine someone wearing like black tie suit or alternately someone in the woods, um, like lumberjack style. But there's a smoothness and a roundness. Um, so I really, really like this. But the one I ended up buying, I did buy one, it's on the way, it was patchouli number one. I think it's just based on what I already own. It's uh, the most different from anything I already own. But this is definitely one, especially as I'm smelling it now, in the back of my mind that I would like to pick up at some point. Okay, so now on to the flowers. The rose is impressive. It's big at the beginning, it's huge. And I do like rose, but I have quite a few rose perfumes already. That might be why I didn't buy it. Um, I'd say in terms of just genre, again, not a dupe, but just to give some reference. I'm not thinking Portrait of a Lady, but I'm thinking Frederick Mall Un Rose. The huge, there's a huge kind of black current in the opening that I also get that gives that wine accord in Un Rose. And I think it's maybe better than Un Rose, but since I own Un Rose, not better, but if you feel like Un Rose has been ruined in its current uh, iteration as Rose Tonnerre, maybe give this one a try. Again, there's rosemary, there's an herbaceousness, there's a brightness to the opening. I think what I didn't love is one, the black current is very strong at the beginning. Um, and it's that almost borderline bug spray, geranium, black current. Like when you take the leaves of certain weeds uh, that have this really astringent smell, you get that. And to me, the dry down is borderline old fashioned rosy, but also something that reminds me a little bit of like a candle or like a rose, um, like soap or some kind of product like that. But it's beautiful. Um, it's definitely a big, giant, juicy rose, a voluptuous red, juicy rose. Um, maybe I'll come around to it one day. I definitely like it. I enjoy wearing it. Just maybe a little redundant among other things I already own. Um, huge performance, probably the biggest performer out of the, um, just the biggest perfume out of the whole lot. And then we come to Impression Cashmere and Velvet. It's maybe my least favorite, although again, it's well done for what it is. Um, like it says, it's based around cashmere. It really has that Santal 33 sandalwood aroma chemical. It doesn't smell like Santal 33, but it's very recognizable once you know that smell. Um, the opening, again, these are all very well constructed and I'm struck that I love the construction of these perfumes. Sometimes vintage perfumes or old, old scent profiles, you get a huge opening and it's like a vacuum and just like sucks down to nothing but like a little little ball of oak moss or something. Um, something unpleasant <laughs> to me at least. These, it's like a very slow and gradual descent. So you get something bright, something that grabs your attention and then just it very gradually transitions into warmer bass notes. They all last, again, they're all quiet. They're all extremely elegant, all refined and nuanced, I would say. Multiple wearings reveal more layers um, as you wear these. The Amaris, maybe it's the Amaris because I do get something that reminds me of the MFK Amaris, although that one's very designery, but it has a nice brightness, a juiciness to the top notes. But I just don't love the kind of, yeah, I can't get over the sandalwood, Centel 33, um, musk or material that's in the base but if you like a warm molecular i thought it'd be like dante bra which is supposedly huge on cashman but dante bra is a lot a lot skinkier there's no skinky musk in this at all um 
Again, that smell, I think I've just smelled Santel 33 candles in too many hotels. So every time I smell that sandalwood, I just think of candle, like burning, attempting to be suave, like cheesy suave, uh, darkly lit hotel. That's not a bad smell, but I just, th those associations, uh, I don't really want to smell like that myself. And finally, we go to Jasmine. Uh, I waffled a little bit upon first trying this. The intro, no doubt, is beautiful, bright, realistic jasmine. Um, after that, however, yeah, it's very beachy. Um, it's very, you get a lot of those kind of bright, happy, fun, white florals aside from jasmine in the later dry down. So let's gardenia, which, yeah, I can definitely see that. It's the Divana and the Elaine, which give that beachy, sunscreeny. Um, vanilla woods, yeah, there's a little bit of vanillic sweetness. Sandalwood mineral accord, which sounds interesting. Um, I don't get, yeah, it's a little mineralic. It's definitely beachy and peach. I think, again, I was comparing because I was looking for something like the Amouage, uh, which is a little more resinous with the Jasmine. And this is more just like straight up happy, fun, beachy. But once again, after wearing it twice, I really love the way it, the way it wears. Um, yeah, it, it starts, the musks are just really beautiful. I don't mind a good, well done, kind of white, clean musk, as long as it's not boring. Um, so there's a little bit of suntan lotion, florals, like banana ylang, um, I, I mean, people who are, who are worried about these things might say it's a bit girly, but it's just that it feels young and fun and carefree. Um, I read recently somewhere, was it maybe on Austin's Instagram, uh, Chris saying that he loved that it wears on a man like a cologne, um, that other people asked what cologne he was wearing because the musks wear kind of clean. So I really like this as well. Great summer wear. Um, it's not your voluptuous, skanky jasmine, not at all. I think I'll have to side by side this with the Amouage as I'm not, I don't think I need so many jasmines. I'll probably choose one or the other. Um, and I'm, I'm only comparing these cause that's what I was looking for. I don't think anyone would immediately smell this and think, oh, Amouage Ashore. Um, it's just that's the one I had in mind. And that's why I wanted to buy this set to try this jasmine before settling on one um yeah again wears beautifully weirdly on skin uh i felt like the jasmine died off a bit quicker and i was just left with kind of beachy suntan lotion uh floral musks but on the strip i noticed smelling it a day later that it still smelled like jasmine it's still red as jasmine to me um so yeah in conclusion, all of these are beautiful, worth trying. Um, they are expensive. I would say if you like big, loud, bold perfumes, you may not be into this, except aside from the rose. Um, if you don't like subtle perfumes, you might find them a little lacking in performance. For me, they all perform pretty well. Um, let's see, gosh, what did I, is this a cedar? Yeah, cedar wood, yeah. You can see that one's light. I sprayed it twice. That one I've used the most of. Um, but they're all very interesting. Uh, I appreciate that they take their time and they've not pumped out a bunch of releases since. It's kind of crazy. I was thinking that I got that rose one from the live, I don't know, a year ago, but I was looking, the interview was two years ago already. Crazy how time flies. Um, but all that time has stuck in my mind. I think they're the kind of business that's really doing things right. They obviously have the experience in the fragrance industry. Um, and it seems like a real passion project. And I think for someone not into perfume, these would also be great signature scents because they're not particularly challenging, um, but they're interesting and they're not mainstream and they're not mundane. And I'm sure the average person uh, hadn't heard of them. Um, but I do wonder being a UK based brand, if maybe, uh, just in general, they've been heard of more there because no stores stock it here as far as I know, but you can order off the website from the U S so that's Austin's 
great brand, worth checking out, um, worth buying the sample set to try them all. Um, cause you might try one and it might not be your thing, but I think it's a pretty good range, but I can also definitely see gaps in their range, like two flowers, one molecule, three woodies that are all kind of similar. Um, so really interesting potential and room to grow. Uh, so if they do release more, very curious to see what else comes up. I've heard the candles are fantastic and I ordered that along with the uh, patchouli number one that'll be coming from Selfridges hopefully next week. Uh, so there you go. Let me know if you have any Austins or what your favorite is.